Spurs fans, are you going to be wearing Manchester City scarves and hoping your team lose to them next month? Arsenal fans, Piers Morgan gave us this rallying cry for your North London rivals to help you out earlier. Come on, guys, put aside the rivalry and you can come forth. And that is going to be the greatest moment in the history of Tottenham Hotspur. Coming forth is a brilliant trophy for you guys. So put aside the, the North London rivalry, get out there on May the 14th, dismantle Manchester City, have your moment in the sun, and go and have an open bus top parade. I'll even pay for it. I will pay for several buses to walk, uh, to, to drive up and down Tottenham, right, celebrating <laughs> coming forth, and we'll all be out there. I'll even wear a Tottenham shirt and join in the bus stop parade. Right, so this is the moment, Tottenham. Come forth, win the nearest thing to a trophy, a real trophy you're ever going to win, and help Arsenal win the Premier League. You know what? <laughs> Do you I, know what? If they if they um, lost to Man City and Arsenal, well, they could still come forth if they mm, don't, couldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> I, the think, <laughs> I think Piers secretly likes the Tottenham shirt mm. because Andrew Leo has tweeted me a picture of him wearing a Tottenham shirt. He says Piers Morgan has previous for wearing our beloved shirt. He wore one when we knocked Arsenal out of the League Cup oh, 2018 right. to 2019 at the Emirates. He clearly loves wearing it. He kept that <laughs> quiet and he has sent me the evidence of Piers Morgan resplendent in a Tottenham Hotspur shirt while sandwiched between Scott Minto and Peter Crouch. So well, there we are. There we go. It's Piers' secret passion. Tottenham Hotspur shirt. Um, 03717 How big is the gap between the two teams? Will Spurs fans be supporting Man City on the 14th of May? Surely not. Let's speak to Ramesh, the Tottenham fan. Morning, Ramesh. Morning. Hi, good morning, gents. How are you doing? Yeah, very good, Ramesh. How are you? All good, all good. Missing your humour on uh, Soccer Saturday, I must say. Oh, that's Missing very good. <laughs> That's very kind of you to say, Ramish. So, look, come on. On May the 14th, you'll still be wanting Spurs to beat City, won't you? Listen, I'll be there, but I don't... You know what? It's, do you know what's really... I've got to look, respect to this Arsenal team. They are a very good outfit. There's no doubt about it. But it goes to show you what patience, spending £700 million plus and four years with Arteta... Uh, can achieve. And unfortunately, we never did that with Poch, and that still breaks my heart to this day. Um, what I will say is what really annoys me is exactly what Piers Morgan is about and some of the smug Arsenal supporters. They've got zero class, and I, I can't see, I just will never want to see Arsenal winning it purely because of that. Even though I respect their manager and I respect their team. That's one point. Re Sorry, Ramesh. Ramesh, are you really calling Piers Morgan smug? First of all, you know, this thing about uh, Ben White and his uh, manure housery tactics, which he's been getting away with for two seasons now, um, I don't understand it. Because when you are literally blocking, shoving uh, goalkeepers, interlocking your arm into goalkeepers, whether it's on the first or second uh, play... Uh, when you're trying to obviously undo their gloves and things like that. How different is that to the way Chelsea scored their goal on, on you know, their third goal, which was disallowed? I mean, a, a little a little nudge, but I just don't understand these double standards. I mean, it's ridiculous. This isn't football. I remember Arsene Wenger, who I respect, um, you know, to one of the top managers, calling out Stoke in those days for doing this type of tactics and you know, thuggery almost. I mean, it's, come on, this is not what Arsenal about. That is out of order. I really don't agree with that. And also, my final, final comment, just very quickly, is I actually thought Oliver was a disgrace. I think he went into that game with a preset way that he was going to referee that game. And he got found out on the decision regarding the Rice referee, uh, Rice uh, penalty decision, rather. Um, that was blatant 100%. But he could just, he basically couldn't wait not to give it. And we were robbed with the Kulisewski penalty. And that offside, I mean, come on, if somebody makes a, an attempt to block the ball and it goes over to a Spurs attacker, why is that not a, why is that not a goal? I don't understand it. Ramesh, thank you very much indeed. Your point's <laughs> very well made. Uh, so Ramesh believes all Arsenal fans are smug. And that's why he can never want them to win the league. What about Sean, the Arsenal fan? Morning, Sean. Sean, are you smug? Uh, I don't want to believe so, but uh, 
<laughs> people have their own opinions. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to make a point that Ramesh, a uh, previous caller, just kind of, uh, I don't know if he set me up for this or not, but um, my point is that I think the rivalry is far more between the fans of the clubs rather than it is the actual clubs themselves. For example, uh, you support a either Tottenham, Spurs or Arsenal, you spawned for your entire life. You've had those years of what you could almost equate to hatred of each other, where the players themselves, they come into a club. A lot of them could be foreign. They probably are a lot. Um, and they come in and they've barely been there any time at all. They probably barely even know anything about the rivalry between the two clubs. So the notion that uh, Tottenham would possibly throw a game, professional players not playing to their best, just to ensure that a club that they are supposed rivals of wouldn't win the league. To me, it just seems a bit nonsense. Yeah, really. I, 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 I no, yeah. nobody would suggest happen. nobody would no. suggest that the players would, would, would throw the game. I, mean, I don't think that's the, the case no. at all. But would never happen. How did the players feel when, well, when you were playing we, in North you, London? You had to derbies. teach in the rivalry. Obviously, they've all yeah. played in derbies wherever they come from, whether it's Italy, France, Spain. So they know mm. the, the importance of the the uh, the game itself but if I'm being honest it is more for the fans um, getting one over on your your North, North London rivals our biggest game of the season was Manchester United you know if, you, if you've got four points out of Manchester United home and away then you've got a chance of winning that league so that, that was our big game and, but the Tottenham game was always big because the fans and the bragging rights on a Monday morning going to work and all that sort of stuff so um, but it's a lot bigger now it's a lot closer in, in clubs uh, than it was in my era, mm, probably. Yeah. Uh, let's take another call. Let's speak to John, the Spurs fan. Morning, John. Morning, Jeff. Morning, Ray. Morning, John. How are you doing? Yeah, good. good what, what have you got to say about this then? Yeah, well, you know, I think uh, everyone seems to be missing out on what Arsenal have got left to do. Um, it's all coming back to Tottenham, but Arsenal have still got three games to play. They've still got to beat who I think is an, an informed Bournemouth type side yeah. at the moment. Yeah. You know, there's, there, there, there seems to be a lot of overlooking and saying, well, Spurs, we want Spurs to beat Man City. Um, you know, we, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll win the league. But um, I think um, I think they need to be looking at what they're going to be doing for the next three matches and not, not um, praying what uh, they want. Tottenham today. I, I promise you now, John. As a player, you don't worry about other teams. It's all about what you do. And if you're not, if you come up short, you come up short. You just got to worry about obviously all their attention will be on Bournemouth now, and then it'd be if they can get a result there, it'd be Manchester. Not not worrying about. Look, they're hoping something can go wrong with Man City. That's what that's how, how you go into any game. But you, all you got to do is worry about your own team and get all three points, and then hope someone can do you a favour. That's all. That's all you do as a player. Yeah, I, I, it'd be honest. dangerous to underestimate. Bournemouth. I mean, they've won six oh, of the last ten. They're in the brilliant. top half of the Premier yeah. League table now. Um, so, so you know no the, question, they're a threat. And Jeff, you know the rivalry between Arsenal and Manchester United over the years. So that's that's no pushover. I know Manchester United so inconsistent. You don't know what sort of team they turn up, but they can beat you on the day. They yeah. beat Liverpool. Um, so that's that's another tricky game. Uh, so look, as a player, you just got to worry about yourselves. You're just hoping. You know, they'd be they'd be they would have beat Tottenham yesterday, and then all eyes would have been on the Man City game, hoping that Forrest can do sure. him a favour. And that's all you can do as a player. Uh, let's take one more we'll squeeze in. Darren, who's an Arsenal fan, who's got I think a, a pretty strong opinion about Spurs. Morning, Darren. Morning. Morning, Darren. Uh, morning, what Ray. You superstar. <laughs> no, nice to speak to you, Darren. What do you got to say, Darren? Yeah, thank you. For it. Well, basically, all these Spurs fans are delusional. They haven't won anything since two thousand and eight. They haven't got, they're not a big club. If they was a big club, they would have won something else. They've got all these fans that are, oh, we're such a great club. They've never seen them win anything. Unlike the Arsenal fans, which have seen class throughout the years. That's why the classy players come to Arsenal and they only leave Spurs. Darren, you're only a big, you're only a big club when you win something, are you? You're only a big club when you've got the history of the club. OK. Because well, I, 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 Le I remember Leicester winning the Premier League titles. Are they a bigger club than Spurs? Of course they are. All right, okay. They've won something. They've won something. <laughs> uh, okay. They've never won anything. Leicester fans now can say, in our lifetime, we won the Premiership. What can Spurs fans say? Oh, we won the Aldi Cup. Yeah. Oh, we done well during quarantine. They've we, we, done nothing. Yeah, we, 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 when was the last time that Arsenal won the Premier League then? Uh, that was 20 years ago. Exactly. So, so, so are Leicester, are Le Le are Leicester, then now, are Leicester now a bigger club than Arsenal? No, because they've only won the Premiership. But Arsenal have won... Oh, the only, only won the Premiership. 
It's one. It's a one off. It was a fluke. You know that yourself, Jeff. Otherwise, they wouldn't have got relegated. Uh, just oh, winding you up, mate. He's winding you up. Just Darren, winding. Don't, don't bite, Darren. No, just winding <laughs> you up, Darren. Don't be worried. So, Arsenal are the only team never to be relegated in history of football. It's a fact. OK. No da- other team can say that. Yeah, and I, I tell you what, Darren, I can guarantee you that record will continue. Uh, Darren, yeah. thanks very much indeed for the call. Passionate, passionate yeah. Arsenal. Yeah, it's great to see fans. both fans. Of you know, course it's, it is. It's what it's all about, though. You know, having opinions about different clubs and whatever. But, yeah. Uh, you know, as I said before, Arsenal have done really well yesterday. Good result. It's always going to be a tricky game, North London derby, but they got the job done. A bit nervous at the end as an Arsenal fan but you know they got the job done in the end yeah uh, on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport